Suppose we measure the response of this by general omega. And we measure this. Okay? And that is the vector, right? And we want to know the contribution of omega 1. What do we do? We trans but pre multiply the transpose of u1, u2. One, one. Then we will know the contribution of first mode. Right? Right? You maybe understand that. It's like a beautiful woman in the mist. Did it? Mist. Right? Sometimes you can see it, sometimes disappear, sometimes you can see it. What you have to do is, one, where is you wait until the mist go away. It takes a lot of time. The other way, you go into. By what? You do. And. Therefore, you need a homework. Therefore, you need a homework. Huh? Okay. This is the basis of modal analysis. Modal analysis essentially use this property and follow the exactly same procedure we had. Okay. So using rest of time, please follow the procedure we take over here. And write down the way to get this result on separate sheet of A4 paper. Okay, that is our surprise piece. Huh? General? Okay. Okay. What we do is we take a determinant. And this will give us two omega. Right? And plug this omega over here. That, that is this. Okay. And this is this. And the k times u11 one one minus k times u21 is zero. Then we can find the solution u21 is equal to u11. One one. That is U1. Okay. Ah, uh, 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 transpose thing. Oh, that's the uh, very difficult concept. Okay. I will repeat. If I take a transpose of U1, multiply U2, I will get zero. Yeah. What if I take a transpose U1 and multiply U1? I will get something other than the contribution of U2. Meaning the contribution of U1. Because transpose U1 to U1 is what? 2. Right? If I normalize it, then I will get 1. That means if I have a general displacement and I measure it and I take a transpose of U1 and multiply it to the measurement I have, then I will get 1 times that is the, con that is the uh, contribution of U1 and the weighting. That is how much really the U1 contribute to the response. So that we call the orthogonal relation. This is like a sine and cosine. Suppose you have you have a sigma, and you said this is composed by many sine. Sine omega one t and sine omega 
two omega one. If you want to get the contribution of sine omega one, what do you do? You multiply sine omega one t and integrate one period, then you will get the contribution of sine omega one t. Because the sine omega one and the sine n omega one are also one of each. So we can use the same Fourier analysis over here in general general concept. Fourier here, Fourier here. So okay, it's difficult. <laughs>